Well, today the novels of Charles Martin are available in 20 countries and printed in 17 languages. His novel, The Mountain Between Us, is currently under development for a movie. Success, however, did not come overnight for Charles. All told, he received 86 rejections before he got a contract for his first book. Take a look. Charles Martin has been writing stories since he was 15, but he never imagined himself as a New York Times best-selling author. Charles put his dream to be a writer on hold until after graduating from Regent University's master's and doctorate programs. He continued writing, but took a job selling insurance to support his family. The money was good, but when the company offered him a six-figure income, he declined. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Charles Martin. Great to have you Thank here. You. Thank you for having you. me. Thank you. When did you first know you wanted to be a writer? I started working on stories when I was 15 because it's, it's how I make sense of what's in When I was 15, I couldn't communicate emotively what was going on. So the Lord gave me the pen to sort of express whatever was bubbling up inside me. And That's I was awesome. able to... I was able to get on a page, but I couldn't get out my mouth. So you were writing on the side. You got a job selling insurance, and you were really good at it. I mean, you did well. You were. Yeah, but I, 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 I was good at it because my brother-in-law trained me, and I helped put legs on his promises. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't my dream. It wasn't, what I, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I had this manuscript in a drawer. Christy had read it. She thought it was good, maybe good enough to find a place somewhere in Barnes & Noble. But here you are, you're, you're offered a six-figure salary, a six-figure bonus with it. A lot of people would have said, ditch the dream. This is working for me. Yeah, but it wasn't my passion. It wasn't what got me out of bed in the morning. I was grateful for it. I mean, my folks, my dad and my grandfather grew up on either side of the Depression. They never would have thought about it. They never would have said, can I think about it over the weekend? They said, yes, can I start today? But yeah. I didn't. I was wrestling with, Lord, why did you put me on planet Earth? I mean, what is it that you want me to do? So here you're offered this money. What did your wife say when you, when you said, I don't want this? She woke me up about write. 4 o'clock in the morning. We had a rough weekend. We were just really wrestling with what, who do you want to be when you grow up? And yeah. about 4 o'clock in the morning, she tapped me on the shoulder, and she said, that's a lot of money. <laughs> but, I, you know, I said, honey, what do you want me to do? That's my, my pipe dream, my dream. I just, and it was, she gave me a gift. I can't ever repay her. Sunday, later that weekend, she came to me. The Lord had really done some neat stuff in her. And she said, okay, we're going to do this one time. And we're going to do it all out. Because I don't want to get with you to your age 40 and you tell me you could have been somebody else. Yes. Oh, my. Now I'm 43 and my stories are in 20 countries and 17 languages. And we did that. The Lord l allowed us to do that. But before you got to that place, yeah. 86 rejections. Yeah. What I did, still have them in a folder at my house. Did at you home. keep? I was going to say, what was that like when those arrived was, in the mail? It shattered me. It was gut wrenching. It was painful, and you know, but as painful as those were, the two since then have probably been more painful. Really? I had I've had two manuscripts rejected since I hit the New York Times list, and those just that that's just shattering. Well, a book is like giving birth to a baby. I mean, you put everything you've got into it when you're doing, and then someone you don't even know says, yeah. mm, not going to work. It's, it's tough. I've had, I've, I've, it's made me hit my knees. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's rough. You're getting reaction from someone. You're like, look, that's my soul on the page. And yes. they don't want it. Did you ever question along the way? I mean, here you were committed to your dream, committed to this passion that was stirring inside of you. But 86 rejections. Along the way, did you ever say, you know what? Maybe I'm not supposed to do There's, this. I heard a story about F. Scott Fitzgerald. This side of paradise was rejected 126 times. And I wow. took a little yellow sticky and wrote 126 on it and put it right there on my computer terminal. And I told myself, when I get there, I'll quit. Wow. And 86 was getting close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little scary. I was starting to squirm a little bit. Yeah. Talk to me about your faith and how that has impacted not just your writing today, but just this whole process for you. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a plan B. I don't know how. I mean, the Lord gives you the faith that you need when you need it, and he gave us what we needed. Um, I pray that my stories honor the Lord. I pray that they're on his shelf when I get there. Yeah. Um, I, and when you get there, it's not just on the shelf. Now you've got a movie deal. 
Yeah, that, and it's been in development for about two and a half years. Peter Chernin at 20th Century Fox bought it, optioned it. I uh, understand it's in development. They have phenomenal people attached to it. I hope they pull it off. I hope they make a story. I'm for you. I'm pulling for you. <laughs> um, I think it would be a great movie. Yeah. But I, I'm so far down on the totem pole, I, I find out when they post it on the Internet. Well, here you are with your books in all these countries, written in all these languages. What, When you look to the future, what are the things in your heart that you want to see happen? I, I'm, as I get older and life dings me more and I get these hard, calloused places, I, I realize I'm not alone in this. Yeah. And my readers are not alone in this. And I, I want to write stories that sort of reach in behind the hard places and circumnavigate them and touch them where they're yeah. still tender and they can still feel and forgive mm -hmm. quickly and laugh deeply. And, and yeah. I want my stories to do that. Hopelessness is something we're fed in this culture, like here. This is your daily dose. You just yeah. eat this today. And I react strongly to that. I don't like it. I don't, I don't think we ought to just have to eat hopelessness because yeah. it's what culture gives us. Yeah. Why not raise in hope to the surface? Well, you do that in Unwritten. That's your latest one. I was up late last night reading this because I couldn't put it down. Is that what you want readers to take away from this book? Because it's all about going to those places that we've allowed to become Two things. Love hard. wins and hope never dies. Yeah. And the second is that Broken cups can still pour water. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes with more appreciation by those yeah. using them. Yeah. yeah. It's an awesome book. You're a Regent grad. I am. Yeah. What was that experience? Awesome like experience. For I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, wow. I, the Lord poured into me. I, we came. I flew in last night, and my I drove up. The guy driving me said, "What are your memories here?" I said, "I remember a lot of hard work." Yeah. And oh, we did. But Christy and I learned to lean on one another and learn to trust one another and the Lord. Um, and my professors here were, were, were awesome. And I don't just say that. I mean, they were. I still take, stay in contact with them. They invested. They invested in me. Mm -hmm. And I did a master's, and then they accepted me into the doctoral program, which still amazes me. And so I finished awesome. that. But that, it was one of the highlights. Total mountaintop. Well, we're so proud of you. So proud of you. Charles' latest novel I want to mention is called Unwritten. It's available wherever books are sold. It is a good read. You'll be up late if you get a hold of it. Great to meet you. Thank you. Wonderful story.